so today I wanted to talk a little bit about the option in the Zoya effects modules to replace the internal modulation uh, with an external modulation source. Uh, this question comes up fairly regularly um, and this is one of the reasons why I say always check the options uh, for modules. There are a lot of hidden features in the Zoya modules that, that allow you to do things that, that people want to do. So this applies, I'm going to use the phaser as an example because it really demonstrates how this works very dramatically because phasing got uh, my reface CP set to its Wurlitzer uh, emulation. Um, but this can be used on the tremolo, the chorus, the flanger. They all have the option of replacing the internal modulation with an external modulation source. So right now I have this set to default. You know, it's controlled by this rate control. But if I go into the option menu by pressing shift in the little pencil and paper, uh, I can change that. So if I scroll down, I've got this option called control. First we have tap tempo, and then we have CV direct. If I select tap tempo, I can hook up a stomp switch or, you know, LFO, and use that to clock the internal modulation, modulation source. But when I put it on CV direct, there is no internal modulation source. We don't hear any modulation occurring, uh, and we can then replace that. So I have an envelope follower here, and I'm just, my input is connected to the input of the envelope follower, uh, and the output goes into the, uh, this new CV Direct. Uh, it's called Direct there. It replaces the rate or tap tempo input and I've enabled I'll just say the rise and fall time on the envelope follower real quickly I'll disable that it may not be as apparent using um, using the C uh, the reface CP but with a guitar the envelope follower can generate a lot of noise because it fluctuates so much if we look at its output since this is a synthesized or, or sampled, I don't really know how the free face works. Since this is a, a more, um, a less noisy signal than a guitar, it may not have that same effect. But with a guitar, you can get a lot of noise on, on the signal. The other advantage here is that I can control the rise and fall. Uh, which allows me to control the dynamics. So, you know, if you even if you don't really want uh, to change the dynamics that much, throwing on the rise and fall time with just a little bit of CV can smooth out a guitar signal. Um, but here, I just want it because I can change the rise time, for instance, to get more of a throaty sound. I've got a small sound, big sound mini hooked up just to give me some more hair. Um, because because Phaser loves a, a lot of harmonic content. And again, since that changes the dynamics of my input signal, it'll change how the envelope follower responds. Uh, you know, the, the und 
undistorted signal is much more dynamic, so I can... control how much the phaser sort of growls. Get sort of clavinet tones out of it. Um, and then there are, I, I just wanted to show some more options uh, for this. So I'm going to disconnect the envelope follower. Another one that people ask about uh, pretty commonly is sort of a stepped phaser. Uh, and what I have here is a, a triangle wave LFO going into a steps module. And what a steps module does is create a stepped output. Uh, you can visualize that because it's cool to look at. Let's throw a little distortion on, since it won't affect the envelope follower anymore. can change the number of steps and the speed get some sort of Bob O'Reilly sort of tones out of that um, here I have a square wave LFO just clocking a random module for that random uh, sound. I'm going pretty fast because that's how I like my random. Turn off the distortion. We can slow that down. slew that output it's got a sort of clickiness as it switches from one uh, frequency to another uh, so that's random and then I've got that same uh, clock that same square wave LFO clocking a, a sequence I just <laughs> Turn that up again. Uh, so those are some options. I just wanted to show a, a couple of other things. So let's say um, we want to control the, the range of the modulation a little bit better. I've shown this particular method off in my bleeps and bloops uh, video before, but it's a good way, I think, for controlling um, something's range. Uh, so I have two value modules, and one I'm going to connect directly to the phaser direct input. The other one I'm going to invert and send to a multiplier. I'm also going to send this other value module to the multiplier. And the reason why I want that is because this will set my minimum. And when I increase the minimum, it will be uh, subtracted from this multiplier input. So it'll keep the, the range it will keep the range from going too high. Um, and so you know this is a, a, a quick way to, to keep your ranges in order. Um, 
So if I wanted to control, you know, this, this step LFO, what I do is then take the output of the multiplier and connect it as well to the CV direct. So what I'm doing here is raising, let me make sure the width is set to maximum. You can also still use the, the controls for depth and, and whatnot that are available on the module itself. I can change around though Uh, where the, the frequencies modulate between using this method because we're uh, changing the, the range of the modulation itself. So again, I'm just connecting a value module to the input, then inverting it. This sets the minimum, then inverting it and sending that to a multiplier. I've got another value module just connected to the multiplier. So what happens is this minimum value gets subtracted from this uh, second value. And the second value is sort of the maximum. Um, and then I've just got my modulation source connected to the other input of the multiplier. And it will keep track of everything for me so I don't have to, to keep adjusting connection strength or thinking about, you know, how much I have applied uh, modulation. So that's one thing I wanted to show off, is just that, that even once you're using the, the CV Direct, you have control over, uh, you know, the range that, that it employs. And again, you, you can also use the width control uh, that's on the phaser, the depth that's on the other modulation effects, um, and then one other thing I wanted to show off was uh, combining modulation sources, because obviously that's one of the great funs, fun things to do with Zoya. So I've got my sequencer going into one channel of a CV mixer and my envelope follower going into the other channel. And the CV mixer is, is set to uh, average. So what that does, what the CV mixer does when it's set to average is it takes the two inputs and basically if there are two inputs it divides the CV by uh, two and adds them together. So, you know, the idea is to average out their, their output. Um, and it's a quick way to just, you know, uh, add two CV sources together without having to worry too much about how they're uh, affecting things. So what I've got here is again my sequencer going into one channel and the envelope follower going into the other and then I've got sort of a dynamic control over how much the sequencer affects the signal. I can control how it fades in and out something a little bit more wild I'd replace the envelope follower uh, with say our stepped LFO because these are on different uh, they're using different you know clock sources should get a, a lot of variety over time sort of get a triangular sequence Let's bring the whip down. So anyhow, that's the CV Direct option. Like I said, it's available on uh, other modulation effects modules in Zoya, like the chorus or the flanger, 
and it's a quick way to really customize those effects um, you know it's a, a, a nice way to just have access to some of the things that that people get really excited about with Soya and again I've answered a, a fair number of questions about this so I'll go back to my point whenever you're adding a module and I'll show you when you add a phaser you've got these options you gotta keep scrolling down got number of stages that's great I have a three stage uh, phaser which is really cool uh, and then you know on control this is where tap tempo lives for a phaser but it's also where this CV direct option is that allows you again to replace the internal modulation source with an external one and that external one can be customized to whatever suits your fancy so I hope this was helpful um, and uh, have fun with Zoya. Thank you.